Over the last two and a half years since I made my first video about seborrheic dermatitis and published the ebook, A Seborrheic Dermatitis Survival Guide, I've conversed with hundreds of people afflicted with this frustrating condition and have noticed some very uncanny similarities between SD sufferers that I'd like to share with you so that we can all better understand this condition. But in order to understand how these commonalities relate to SD, I want to lay some groundwork that may seem redundant if you've watched my other videos, but just bear with me. First, you have to realize that this condition is not one dimensional in nature. And what I mean by that is that it is psychosomatic. It is caused or aggravated by a mental factor such as internal conflict or stress. Three years ago, when I was still suffering, some holistic practitioners would tell me about this aspect, but I never really took it seriously. As an American, I'm programmed to believe that for every health problem, there is a magical product or diet that can resolve it. So I experimented with all kinds of supplements and tried all kinds of diets. But if you're focusing on that, you're really missing the bigger picture. I feel obligated to elaborate on this because many of you are like I used to be and don't take this association seriously because it's hard to comprehend. To put you in a different frame of mind, I'm sure there was a time in your life when you did not have SD and during this time I doubt you were on some strict diet and I doubt you were taking a bunch of supplements every day and your skin was fine. This was also probably when you were a child or adolescent or during a time when you were more happy-go-lucky. So how do you explain that? What happened? What went wrong? First of all, you have a sensitive skin barrier. All right, 100% of people with SD have that. This can either be genetic, maybe you're of Northern European origin, or it was damaged by too much sun exposure, skin creams, alkaline soaps, things of that nature. So that's the first thing. The skin barrier makes it possible for malassezia yeast to penetrate it, but why the autoimmune reaction? I believe there is a reason why SD typically rears its head around adolescence or in early adulthood. This is a transformative, stressful time that everyone copes with differently. Every individual is going to respond differently to the same situation. The rose-colored glasses of childhood begin to fade away at this time, which can be traumatic, especially if you were dealt a particularly difficult hand. Maybe you had to deal with a broken family, financial difficulties, the loss of someone close to you. Maybe you were bullied or had abusive parents and siblings. Maybe you had an injury or a breakup. In early adolescence and as a young adult, our brains are mature enough to finally begin digesting our childhood and using what we've learned as a child from the surrounding adults to cope with adulthood, which isn't always ideal. So how does this relate to SD? This emotional trauma makes your CNS, your central nervous system, become imbalanced because the sympathetic nervous system was activated too often at some point. The sympathetic nervous system is also known as the fight or flight response. Parasympathetic is, is the rest and digest mode. But being in the survival mode too often can lead to physiological imbalance or a deregulated nervous system. Now, we've already established that SD is an autoimmune response to malassezia yeast. Well, the nervous system and immune system are closely related. The, the central nervous system modulates the immune system via the secretion of hormones and neurotransmitters. If you have an imbalanced nervous system, you're going to have an imbalanced immune system that reacts in unusual ways. And an autoimmune response certainly is an inappropriate way to react to a yeast that is naturally present on everyone's skin. Not only do these two systems depend on each other, but the CNS and immune systems are very similar and essentially act in the same way. For example, when you're sick because of a bacteria or a virus, the acquired immune cells are expanded and stored as memory so that when the same pathogen is encountered again, you can fight it off more easily the next time. On the other hand, your emotional response to experiences leaves memories and imp or imprints in the nervous system. How we do anything is how we do everything. So, as an SD sufferer, you are a highly sensitive person that feels things deeply and intensely because any individual's CNS 
functions in the same way as their immune system. If your immune system is overreacting to a yeast, that means your brain must be overreacting to experiences. Because of this close communication between the brain and the immune system, any alteration in one system is going to impact the functioning of the other one. There are animal and clinical studies regarding the effects of early life stress on immunity and it's been proven that excess activation of the sympathetic nervous system due to early life adversity makes the immune system overactive. So having established the relation between the nervous system, immune system, and SD, here are the strange similarities that I've noted that certainly play a part, or I think certainly play a part in the onset of SD. All of these things put unusual stress on the nervous system, whether, or, whether you are consciously aware of it or not. The first is time spent abroad or in a place where you don't really feel at home. I've been living in France for nearly 10 years now and my SD worsened a lot when I initially came here. I spoke with an individual who spent a year in New Zealand and his SD got worse when he got back. I believe that for sensitive people, <coughs> travel is confusing to the identity and sense of self. Since you are not in the cocoon-like place of wherever it is you're from, you have this constant underlying stress and maybe don't feel like you really belong. On two instances, I came home to visit my family and my SD went away. But I, bit, I didn't make the connection at the time. I thought it was thanks to the supplements I was taking. Another similarity is uh, people with SD often come from broken families. I know I do. This creates feelings of insecurity, low self-confidence even before the onset of SD. Maybe you were humiliated or harshly criticized at, at some point. Um, that was traumatic. Another is obsessive behavior. The SD sufferers I've interacted with are extremely thorough people who have a tendency to go down rabbit holes in all areas of life. This is an indication of trauma. Um, you, you may not be able to put your finger on the source of that trauma, but the nervous system remembers every experience you've ever lived, even when you were an infant or a child. Another is intense workouts, especially bodybuilding. Um, I've noticed a lot of SC sufferers bodybuild. Um, I did, and it worsened when I was doing that. Um, overeating to bulk up and weight training is stressful on an already compromised nervous system. Another similarity is people around uh, ST sufferers often also have skin problems. My sisters all have skin problems. They have eczema and acne. And you may be saying, well, that's clearly genetic. Well, I spoke with somebody recently who has SD, whose stepdad also has SD. Um, my mom and her boyfriend of four years, who I recently met for the first time, uh, came here to visit me last week. And he had severe SD all over his face. He told me he had never had this before, which was very perplexing. It's also possible that we attract specific types of people into our lives who are on similar wavelengths and have common karmic debts so we can grow and evolve together as spiritual entities. Um, that's obviously just speculation. The ego hates SD, but maybe the soul doesn't because it is learning from this difficult experience and is trying to teach you something. Maybe it's trying to teach you to let go, forgive, be more humble, less vain, do things for the right reasons, accept and find peace with yourself. It's going to be slightly different for everybody. My roommate and best friend in college had severe psoriasis. He was Ukrainian, living abroad uh, in France, depressive, paranoid, would overreact to everything. He grew up poor and had an emotionally abusive father. Um, my best friend in high school had mild ST the last time I saw him, uh, which was in 2017. His dad died when he was 18 of alcoholism and his mother is in a psychiatric hospital. He did not have SD when we were in high school together. Um, the accumulated damage takes time to add up and cause issues, but not always, sometimes it's immediate. Ray Charles, he developed glaucoma and became blind shortly after witnessing his brother drown. Uh, glaucoma is an autoimmune condition. I don't believe it's a coincidence that I cross paths with these individuals with skin problems as well. Like attracts like, People with similar personality traits have similar health problems. People with emotional trauma of a similar nature have similar health problems. In the case of Ray Charles's glaucoma, he didn't want to see anymore. He, it, was, it was horrifying what he had to see. In the case of SD, you're literally not comfortable in your own skin. 
the body always tells the truth. There's no lie in nature. Now, don't be discouraged because you can recalibrate the nervous system and subsequently correct your immune system in the case of SD. Obviously, glaucoma, that's a little bit harder. Um, and other autoimmune conditions are way more severe. Fortunately, the body is incredibly resilient and adaptive. If it can be thrown out of balance, it can also be brought back to a state of equilibrium. But first of all, get rid of your symptoms. The stress of looking at an inflamed, flaky face in the mirror isn't helping. There are many ways to do this. Biomate, MCT oil, yogurt face masks, raw honey face masks, sea salt. Get rid of toxic people in your life. Set boundaries. Move somewhere else if you have to. Get rid of financial stress. This activates the sympathetic nervous system even more. Spend time in nature. Dry skin brushing, coffee enemas, cold exposure, acupuncture. Visit an osteopathic physician, TCM practitioners. Listen to uplifting music. Play music. Learn new things. There, there is also promising evidence with regards to psilocybin. It can help reset your brain. This is controversial, but I, I also think that the correct use of tobacco also helps with nervous system disorders. This means never inhale tobacco smoke, never smoke cigarettes. Only use occasionally consume tobacco in the form of additive-free pipe tobacco and cigars. Get enough sleep. Go into bed early. Wake up early. Get sufficient sun exposure. Um, sun gazing. By using these methods and manipulating the nervous system in a positive way, you can help create new positive imprints on the nervous system, which will have a beneficial influence on this autoimmune disease. All of the ways to eliminate symptoms and rebalance the nervous system and physiology are more extensively explained in my ebook. If this video has resonated with you and you also can relate to these similarities that I've personally noticed, Please leave a comment below. I hope this video has helped you better understand SD and how to go about addressing it at the source. Thank you to everyone who has supported um, the ebook, and I wish you all a great day.